may ask the panelists to come up and, and sit here. There's Tavleen, there's Mini, Tavleen Singh, Mini Vaz, Sadia Dhelvi, and Rashmi Sekhbena, who uh, I found just last evening uh, had worked under my father, so I said, please come and be on the panel as well. Uh, come anywhere. And uh, uh, yeah, no, I think so. You can put it somewhere. Uh, yeah. So I um, we'll be talking quite a lot about my father, but I just thought I would uh, 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 sort of mention two of his traits or his characteristics uh, just to set the ball rolling. Um, and one was, of course, his uh, sense of humor, uh, you know, which he felt that uh, uh, we must maintain all over the country. And uh, uh, let me just tell uh, and also, um, uh, so I just mentioned this anecdote. You people might have heard before, but it's worth repeating that um, uh, he used to, you know, have these Santa Banta jokes at the end of his column always. And, uh, you know, and these Santa Banta jokes, which are Sikh jokes, were usually sent to him by Sikhs themselves. So um, once he got a very uh, firm letter from. Uh, the SGPC, you know, which is the Shrovani Gurdwara Prabhupada Committee, the highest authority on the Sikhs, saying, please stop your Santa Banta jokes. Uh, so he used to write in post, you know, he used to communicate in postcards. So he sent them back a postcard saying, go to hell. And, and he never heard from them again. So another important trait of his was the importance of importance of dissent. Uh, and he could even be outrageous. Um, and, and so this next anecdote combines his sense of humor and his outrageousness. And anybody would come to his house in those days, he would show a letter to which was addressed to him and which he said somehow got to him. And on the address was written, Kushwan Singh Bastard India. And it arrived, and he says, tell the story, everybody, look, this is what uh, the post office even knows who I am. So just just for giving you those instances. Now, I, one of his great uh, uh, concerns and passions was promoting Indo-Pak ties. And, um, and uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, because of the poor relations between India and Pakistan, we have not been able to, um, uh, you know, have Pakistanis coming here for understandable reasons. But I'd just like to read out a poem by a Pakistani, eminent Pakistani, who uh, uh, used to come here and who uh, was a great uh, fan and devotee of my father. His name was Fakir Ijazuddin. Um, and he sent this poem, especially for this literature. And it's titled, From Someone Who Is Not On The List. There was a time when time evoked tomorrow. Today, it speaks only of yesterday. Where has the promise gone of brotherhood, sound the frontiers? Where are the tears we shed, the blood to irrigate an earth? Once yours, now mine, once mine, now yours. Why must my only view of of you be through the barrel of a gun? Why must I search for you in the debris of a divided sun? How long will this David daily suicide last? Will we have separate heavens there of minor self sharing another common hell? Okay, Jadudin, 9th October, 2019. Undivided love. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, before I end and give it to the, the panel, um, uh, I'd just like to mention that a very old friend of mine, Vaitan Patel, who's present here, uh, has written a book, his memoir, very readable, and there's uh, 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 a lot of mention about my father. And I just thought I'd read out one passage from that because it deals with my father.
but my, I owe my entire career as a journalist to Fusman. Uh, I also nearly didn't become a journalist because of Fusman. Because the first article I wrote, I said to him, you know, he was the most famous journalist of my generation. And you know, the, the little sodality and the bubble thing. And I sent him this article and he returned it without any kind of, um, without even a message of, uh, of this missile of approval. And then gradually, when I started to write, I suppose, better articles than the one I sent him, we, we got to know each other and it turned out that his father and my nana were best friends. And he told me the story of how between five and three uh, Jantarmanta Road, there was a little door that they used to, the, to meet each other. So that kind of, you know, brought us a little bit together. Where, where I had now have met him that when the bar came out, um, I was in the Jumkhana Club and Rahul was in the audience. And I said, because somebody mentioned that my nana was one of the people who built New Delhi. And I said, you know, well, I'm very glad that he's been mentioned because thanks to was one thing, everyone thinks it's only so so passing from New Delhi. And Rahul, when he came out, he was one laugh. <laughs> but I, you know, I then went on to sort of disagree with him thoroughly on his political opinions. He could be very weak sometimes politically. Yeah. So when he was, you know, the big fan of Sanjay Gandhi and there was the emergency, etc., I had real differences with him, but never disrespect. And then what happened was, you know, the 1984 uh, moment when I thought that he was going to continue to just stay away because sometimes when there was a political issue that he was uncomfortable with, he would often just stay away from it. And, you know, it made me proud to know him that he came out as strongly as, as any Sikh did at that point and gave back, you know, his awards and, and that sort of thing. So, you know, for me, my respect then continued. And then as a, as when I became a writer, it was because of Khushwan. I had a book on Kashmir, which is now the issue of the moment, and it's going to be discussed at this festival. And I wrote it because I actually covered the beginning of the insurgency. And I was about you know, I was among maybe five journalists who were going up there and really writing the story. So I felt I had to write it in a book. It wasn't just worth an article. But of course, I was a new, I was a new author and nobody would publish me until I took it for first ones and I said, can you just read it for me? He read it and he called me after he finished and he called David Davidar of Penguin and he said, you will publish this book. And for me, I'm here because of that man. I have a similar story about you with uh, um, My memories of uh, Krishan Singh uh, are uh, almost uh, 25 years old. Uh, as a rookie reporter, I was uh, covering Punjab for the first time, Punjab in 30 years, uh, for news strike. And it, I mean, as part of my job, we used to uh, interview militants and they like to call themselves cartoons at that point. And so we had to give their news. And so for the same rational, uh, perspective, or historical perspective, and overview. Kushan Singh was my go-to man. So much so that people like Sidhuji Singh Man, uh, you know, they chat would uh, say, so who's there for the debate? Kushan Singh. So they all, you know, kind of thought that okay, he's, he's a regular person. And uh, uh, so that, that was a professional thing. But um, uh, even personally, he, I just once mentioned that I'd like to write a book. And then he took me constantly to David Tavita. He was just here and out and sat and heard my whole speech. And that was it. So I remember his professional expertise and help that he gave to a rookie reporter and his personal kindness of, you know, taking me there and, and being there. So um, I just like to read out a tribute uh, that I've written on uh, Facebook uh, on the day that he died at the age of 99 in 2014. <laughs> Come and sit next to me while you're sitting there or telling us the debate. That the grand old man of Indian journalism to me is Punjabi in the drawing room of Mr. Jan Singh Park residence in Delhi. Those were the new track days when Punjab was in the throes of insurgency, when Simon Jit Singh Mahal was seen as an Akali Belt hardcore terrorist rather than a politician, when journalists spent time and research profiling their stories, and when people like Kushman Singh sat you down, willingly gave of their time 
offered breakfast and refreshingly drank an orange coat in the ensuing debate with them for any later, pitting him against the same similar to see him. But this is about the grand old man sitting with his knees propped on the rolled up motor's only baby hands, chatting away, insisting on Punjabi while she learned I was one, reminiscing about the illustrated weekly where I too had spent some years much after he left the class, calling on to his wife to answer to us, his scholars and Tarzan. I could go on and on in a classic way. Uh, I wish he had turned hundred. I wish I had gone back to meet him another day. I sent him a copy of my first book and kept meaning to meet him on my ex daily visit to ask him what he thought of it. I never did. Kushan Singh, you will be missed. This is what I get to do today. That I'm a sexual reporter in the Hindustan Times when Kushan became the editor. The day his name was announced, there was quite a flutter in the office because, you know, we had, had very, uh, people who, I would say, have not been very controversial as editors. So everybody in the room, you know, the reporter's room, more so than any other place, said, now, how are we going to deal with Pushpan Singh? So somebody came and said, he just looked at me and uh, said, why are you people debating uh, this? How is Pushpan Singh going to deal with you? That's the question, you know. So we all said, yes, maybe that's right. And within about, um, I think he arrived in office the next day. And Pian um, came to me and said, Aapko, that it is Aapulare. I almost fainted, you know. I was just a reporter, you know. And I had never met Pushpan Singh earlier. So I looked at Pian and said, why is he calling me? So he said, uh, Pushpan Singh said, uh, editor staff said, uh, go and look around and uh, wherever there's a woman, you just call her. Now I was even more petrified. So anyway, I landed up there and uh, knocked and went into his room. It was still, you know, in a state of uh, being you know, switched over to the next uh, thing. And uh, he said, uh, Acha, so, are you, are you the reporter? I said, yeah. He said, come here, come and sit here. I look at this. So, I looked up and on the uh, wall behind his chair, there was this huge painting and it was the nude. So, he said, uh, so, what do you think about this? So, I said, uh, I didn't know how to really react, actually. So, this is, I said, but you know, um, this is what people expect of you. This is what they will expect that you have this sort of a painting. Uh, you know, and there's going to be a meeting tomorrow which is supposed to be the first editorial meeting. He said, Are, so take it off, take it off. So I said, No, the painting is nice. He said, No, I don't want people to think this is what I, it should be, and then there'll be no surprise ever then. And I said, I realized that. I'm just a reporter and he didn't care, but my opinion mattered to him. It was, you know, the most important thing in a newspaper office, that the editor was willing to listen to the voice of a person or the views of a person who was junior in the ranks, you know. And then he later told me as I was leaving, what you told me is very important. One should never do in life what people expect you to do. So I said, but you only live up to your image. This is your image and this is what you built for yourself and you want to be like that. He later told me, of, uh, I think about a few months after that, he said, you know, what you told me, I've been thinking about that. And I said, Mr. Krishnan Singh, I'm really flattered that what I told you, you're thinking about it, you know. He said, no, that's up to I listen to everyone, but I do what I feel like. Which I really think underlined his uh, personality and I saw it. And then, of course, I moved out and went away to Sri Lanka and I was reporting there. And when I came back, I didn't have a job. Uh, you know, I was still trying to figure out what to do. And uh, I just got a call one day and uh, one of our common friends said, uh, Mr. Kushwan Singh is uh, saying you returned from Sri Lanka. Why haven't you gone to visit him? So I went to visit him and at the Singh Park. 
and his first question was, Ali, now you just want to sit at home, you don't want to do anything. So I said, well, I'm looking for a job. He said, I'll get you one, just wait. And he called up MJ Akbar, and uh, he learned that day that MJ Akbar had left, and I forget the name of that gentleman who is uh, joined. At the end of that, anyway, Shubo, Shubo, Shubo. Uh, yeah, sorry. So he called him and said, uh, I'm sending uh, Rashmi, and uh, you uh, give her a job today, huh? Today, just get her an uh, appointment later. And I became a correspondent, uh, joined the Bureau of Sunday Magazine. That's how he was, you know. And once when I came back from Sri Lanka, and, uh, I asked him, you know, he said, so what are you doing? What is your worry? And, you know, that same day, the day you got me the job. I said, well, my son has to go to the school, so I'm running around. He said, TK, I'll get you a job, I'll get the admission, send him to Bodhi School. And that was it. That was the one thing as I know. And that's how I'd love to remember it. Thank you. Hello? Yeah. You're right. Well, I'm in the very happy to be here. And yeah, I can say that this one was my best friend for I think over 35 years. I am very blessed, very fortunate. Somebody who really nurtured me both intellectually, emotionally. His shoulder was always there to cry on when I had a broken heart. And you know, we often celebrated together. And he was the keeper of my secrets. He kept in our art class. Or just um, maybe, maybe I think he held half of Delhi's secrets, but he was not very good at keeping them. And it was very well known that if you wanted something to everybody to know, you just tell Pushma, don't tell anybody it's a secret. And then soon everybody would uh, very much know. And I don't know, we had this incredible bond of friendship. And um, I think it was in 1989 that in a magazine, in a society magazine, I gave an interview and said that the only man in my life is this one thing. And uh, they put it on the billboards in Bombay, and uh, he was brought to Kushan. He was so delighted about it. And he said, Pune mujhe badnaam kartiya. And, uh, you know, you gave me so much notoriety, more than I deserve. And that's when he dedicated his book, not in my mind, you know, saying that I gave him the notoriety that he did. I also dedicated a book to him. Um, the Sufi Courtyard, the Dutch of Delhi, because we really shared this love for Delhi. And when I told him that I'm thinking I write for Kushan and the city of Delhi, the people's love. And he said, no, no, it could be very childish also and very demanding. And he said, nay, nay, I didn't say your dedication, only for me. And you just write Kushan. Ustina, the spike in the deep star. So I wrote that. And um, the house really became the window to the world. And you met presidents, prime ministers, politicians, journalists, writers, and sometimes very strange people who, you know, meet ordinary people. Um, some of them came in with their conversations with God, which used to be very fascinated about. And, and somehow, you know, everybody felt they could trust him. And uh, they could tell him their secrets. And he just was an incredible um, person. I'd also like to say, I don't know how much time I had, I would like to uh, definitely speak on two points and further what Rahul said about uh, his, um, you know, having a tough spot for a Pakistani and also for Muslim. And he had these curtains in his house which says, I think they're still there, Salaam Alaikum, Alaikum Salaam. And if any Muslim went there, he'd be so proud and show, oh, you know, Allah, 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 it's in the Muslim declaration of faith. And, you know, calligraphic pieces he picked up from various parts of the world. And then he said, the puja is an arm, you can have it, you can make them at ease. And, and he told me that my house is always open for a Muslim, for a Pakistani. They were the only ones they could actually really come in and announce and say, the Pakistan is here, Salman now, Muntaho. So, and he would say, when he went to Pakistan, he would say about Pakistan, ki mera Makkah to Pakistan mein hai. When he went to Hajari, he said, Now, I 
don't, I think he got away with saying and writing a lot of that. But in the current situation, and I think uh, he could have very well been charged with sedition for a lot of what he would have written. And um, he, like he said, he, Rahul said, he had no time for religious bigotry. Um, he called them Fandus. You know, whether they were Muslim, Hindus, they could not matter. He was just very committed to uh, liberalism, to secularism. And I think within Gone, the, the liberals and the secularists really lost a very strong, um, their best friend and a very strong voice for that. And, um, you know, he used to say that he felt unclean in the presence of somebody who had any form of religious bigotry. It was just something he just couldn't tolerate. He used to call them poisonous snakes they are. And uh, I think he even once told Rani that, to his face, right, that you sold the, you know, the seeds of communal disharmony in this country and he never, you know, though he had tried to support him once, I think a long time ago, but then he became uh, very anti. So in a way, I miss the fact that he's not here to stand up for the kind of religious intolerance that is going, you know, is increasing. And yet I feel that in a way I'm happy that he is gone when he did, because I don't think he would, I think he would have been a very, very uh, sad man. Um, there's something I want to say which I've never told anybody and I've never written about it. I'm not at any gathering. Um, you know, when I used to meet him uh, last, of course he wants to see whenever I went in, he said, I, I was expecting you. I said, no, because he wasn't really picking up the phone or anything. I said, no, I don't think you were expecting me. He looked at me so lovingly and he said, I'm always expecting you, you know. And he used to tell me, he said, jaldi, jaldi, aya kar, mere paas vakt nahi hai. He was also very proud of the fact that he's never missed the deadline of an article or a book and like, work that he's done and, you know, he's never anybody asked anybody for a favor ever or uh, award or, you know, was able to. But he said, I have said that 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 I was going to tell you was that basically, you know, about the, the, the many last time, um, the last few times that I met him, he was like obsessed with this, uh, you know, I used to be rather amused. Uh, he kept saying, I want to meet Shahabuddin. Now, Shahabuddin was in charge of the Babri Masjid Action Committee. And I want to say it now because I think the judgment is coming up and I pity if we are not pretty clear which side it will go. And uh, he said, Mujhe Shahabuddin se milnaye. Mujhe Shahabuddin se uske paas mujhe check di I said, what's happened to you suddenly? I don't even know where he is or if he's around. I don't know. I didn't mention. He said he wanted to give me a check uh, to hand over to Shahabuddin for the rebuilding of the Barbary Masjid. He said that he wanted to, um, you know, really demonstrate that uh, a Sikh giving money for the rebuilding of a mosque. And I kept telling him, I said, don't you know it's under litigation? He said, you know, Shahabuddin, are kya kuch nahi ye kaur, what kuch nahi, bas mujhe paise de me, you know? And there was no point arguing with him. And he said it so many times in the last bit of something which was really there in his mind. And that I actually was able to record because I didn't think at some point if I wrote to the people it's a car, car, car. So he said I recorded it on my phone, which I um, uh, still have. I also once did a program, we all know, like he said to Rahul, that he brought a lot of wit and humor to public life. And uh, we know him all as a very, as a thorough gentleman, never getting drunk, very peaceful. But he did go out of his way to project that image of being the Sultan of Seas and this dirty old man. And, you know, he made him, he loved people abusing him, um, provoking, you know, he never really got provoked, which is get great news. I did a program with him called Not a Nice Man to Know, and uh, where he interviewed women from different fields and uh, you know and he was for the first few shoots he was he came very badly dressed and he was shot uh, painted stained and then my producer when I showed him the pilot objected and this was for Star Plus so he interviewed uh, I think um, Curtis Sambata, uh, Pratima, Sharmila, Asma and lots of other women so he said I said you know I have to make you good clothes you can't 
I can't have you like this. Like this is our yeah, name. My name was so stubborn. He said, I have a reputation as India's worst dressed man, and I want to keep it that way. You want me to be? It was a great difficulty that I actually my cousin gave me a. Uh, his wife gave me a suit, and I got it tailored from the tailor that you had in Ambassador Hotel, which he which he made, and and then you know I thought in the book I'm not going to get my money if you don't wear it. So I just played with him on the set, and then he said, "That's how I." He also never took the money that I used to give him. I mean, I used to force it down to give it to him, but he said. Don't need money. I said, look, it's always the other way around. So you still don't pay and interest in all my money. But he was one person. He just always on my life, all the time. He always said, I don't need anything. He has very few needs. He never complained of any kind of, you know, money, 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 And I'm just going to wind up now. I just like to uh, say, in the end, Kushan was really. He said, "I don't have no time for prayer. I just read Khalid." And I think this is one of the couplets that he was very fond of. That he just had really Khalid by his side. Long may he rest in Umar. कहाँ देखिए हमें ना हाथ बाँध रहे हैं ना पाँव हैं काब में. And then his other favorite was. वो हाथ में जुम्बिश नहीं है आँखों में सुनम है रहने दो सागरों की ना होंगे आगे। So I think we all miss Kushwan then, um, you know, we just need to treasure him, cherish him. He was a national treasure, and we cherish him, we cherish him in our hearts. But more importantly, in today's times, I think we need to cherish him in our conscience and keep him alive and keep him alive. Thank you. Five minutes for opening it up to the house and asking any questions. I might just like to add that though he was very critical of Advani and what happened, but you know Advani, after, even after that criticism, came every, on his birthday, every birthday to wish him. And uh, uh, I think at his uh, cremation, he was one of the first people to turn up at the cremation. So he had that effect even on his people who criticized. So now, unless anybody would like to say something more, can I throw it open to Sameen? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
to forget it. But the book did get published much later, and I must say that uh, I want to uh, salute Kushman's editor's eye because the book is still selling its share copies of here in its fourth edition, and it worked. But I want really to share the joke that we used to do the rounds of the Times of India building, where we had um, a first reading. And uh, very often, you know, the, when they were doing repairs after the rains, things would crumble. Uh, maybe a piece of the ceiling would fall down. It had fallen in my department when I was there. And there is the story that it happened in the weekly when Mr. Singh was there. and. Uh, not only did a piece of the ceiling fall, but a man descended on his table. And he looked at the man and he said, Kaas, tum aurat ho tu. So this was a rather irreverent, but very, very beautiful story that I wanted to share. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. You see all the women in the panel and all women talking about him. So you know he was a women lover. And uh, something uh, I think everybody is really talked about all his qualities. I, I would just like to mention that me and my husband had a girl. We met him 25 years ago. And I had written a small, uh, um, I had written um, something about Keith and we had taken to him. Uh, people had this feeling that he was not religious, but he had a knack about good music and kitchen. And he did give me, uh, you know, some insights about what I'd written. And he also published that in one of the our meeting, meeting both of us in one of his columns. And that was the beginning of our association. We were among his youngest uh, friends. We used to come to his party, sometimes even taking a little baby boy with us then realizing what did we do. And uh, uh, and he was also responsible to get my son into learning tree and then uh, it goes on. And uh, when we started 1469, uh, which is around 15 years ago, he was the person who actually told us what Fulkari is all about and uh, how much this street of Punjab has, uh, you know, ha this handcrafted uh, treasure in it. And he also parted with one of his uh, best pieces which he was given by somebody in Pakistan. He gifted that to us and gave all other bars for, to us to, uh, you know, we could uh, take pictures for our books and all. And he's always been, he used to receive a lot of postcards as he mentioned, where he would just give an idea about something that we could print on a t-shirt. So we have lots of memories and I think everybody sitting here has so many of them. Uh, we wish, we are happy to continue our association into the lit fest and we have been uh, uh, very fortunate to design the t-shirts and the jholas and some creators every year. Hope the journey goes on. Thank you. In mind is Kushwan Uncle's humor. We've decided uh, to have a Kushwan Singh humor festival, um, which we are planning to do now. Uh, it'll be 
I think sometime around Feb March, details of course will follow. My friend Mahip is going to share you a little more for that. Hi, hello. Uh, thank you everybody <coughs> for listening. Um, uh, 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 how do we remember Kushwan Singh if not because of his wit and his humor? Uh, I think if, if he was alive, he would have been a very uh, good stand-up comedian and uh, uh, probably will be sharing a jail cell right now uh, with a lot of them. So, uh, I, 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 with my uh, utmost respect, I thank uh, Rahul ji uh, for allowing us uh, to organize Kushwan Singh Humor Festival in 2020 uh, in Delhi and uh, we would uh, like you to be a part of that and please uh, we'll, be, we'll be releasing a, a website and a Facebook page and you can follow Kushwan Singh Humor Festival and please be part of it. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, you heard Rahul talk about uh, Bhai Chand Patel and uh, some snippets that he's written in his book. So this is the book, I Am a Stranger Here Myself, which has a lot of, uh, uh, he, uh, he says, unreliable memoirs. So this book is available here. That's Fraction. Yeah.